Hello, I'm Ramey. And I'm Beth. And this is Brother Knows Quest, the podcast where I, your host, introduce my sister to the wonderful world, or worlds, of tabletop role-playing games. It's been a while, but Beth, do you have any idea what we're talking about today? Midgard Heroes. Cobalt Press's Midgard setting. It's going to be the Heroes Handbook and the Midgard World Book. I figured I'd put those two together, and maybe next time or two we'll talk about some of the cool bestiaries and spell books they also have. The, the World Book can be used with Pathfinder as well, but the Heroes Handbook will only work with 5e but you can i'm pretty sure there's pathfinder versions out there if you're interested in such things it's a cool fantasy world of course it's using 5e the fantasy world of midgard which is flat and floats in a vast space of living stars the world is surrounded by a great serpent velis i think is the name the father of the void the setting is inspired by european and middle eastern mythos with a medieval level of technology you know anything about thor and his norse stuff that's kind of what the, i get the feeling of but it's more than that region. It's a world of deep magic where ley lines, rivers of magical power flow across the land. Some people know how to harness these things for spell casting or magical travel. Some elves use the magic to create shadow roads, kind of what we call uh, fey roads and certain things, or the way into the Dresden Files. They use it to travel great distances. There's, of course, a lot of weird places in a world like this, as you would imagine, as well as a bunch of unique classes or subclasses for your 5e campaign i use a lot of them to be honest with you there's one in particular that i think is amazing even though i've never personally played it but this is one of the few i have played parts of it even if it isn't in the midgard setting Mm -hmm. which is a rarity here there's so many games that are so odd that i can't find enough players to play it this is not one of course it has something to do with 5e i'd imagine there's a place called kyle gate uh, I think is what has pronounced an ancient shrine guarded by stone ice maidens where you can learn about the world serpent. There's a shrine of Caldgate, a mysterious shrine that leads adventurers on a quest to bargain with Boros, the North Wind itself. Have you ever heard of Baba Yaga? No. Okay. Well, she's cool. She's also in the latest Hellboy movie. She, well, I ain't going to spoil something about the Dresden Files. She's pretty cool. You should look up some videos on you, Baba Yaga. Uh, she, they have her dancing hut, which is another one of those interesting spots you can find, or it wanders up to you. A magical hut with chicken legs that serves as the home of the powerful witch, Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga has been mentioned in a lot of games and a lot of lore and, uh, Slavic witch, I believe. The Wormwood, a dark forest is inhabited by infernal gnomes, which made a pact with devils to escape from the wrath of Baba Yaga. They kind of sound like something that you wouldn't enjoy. Devilish gnomes. Beth doesn't like gnomes, do you? I had a dream they ate my cat, and then my cat vanished (laughs) right after. (laughs) So I'm blaming the gnomes. The gnomes did it. Well, don't go to the Wormwood, because those gnomes will be pretty bad. And also, I had twin baby gnomes in one of these games, and they made me poop myself when I was pregnant with them. (laughs) That was me. I wasn't as sensitive back then. (laughs) (laughs) I wouldn't do it to the average player. So yeah. It, it, it tells you how bad Baba Yaga must be if they sided with a devil over her. There's a, the Tilted Tower, a mile-high tower of green glass that leans precariously over the sea, once home to a powerful elven sorcerer or sorcerers. I personally enjoy the Baba Yaga stuff, but there's so many more. There's like the Moonlit Glade, a sanctuary of light and hope in the Shadow Realm, inhabited by bear folk who resist the plane's corruption. And the shadow realm is kind of like the forgotten realms. The shadow fell. Dark. Everything, all the emotion is drained out of everything. The court of one million stars, a floating city of silver and pearl, home to fey creatures who study the stars and practice illumination magic. There's, I mean, there's, there's lists and lists of these things. But there's also cool species and races you could play as, like the raven folk. These are uh, scoundrels of black feathers and long beaks. They're spies, informers, thieves. The minotaurs bullheaded humanoids known for their strength and labyrinthian magic which is a type of magic it's it's not using the standard magic types you get in normal dnd you can add them in i mean they're completely compatible but they, they have their own here they have a complex structure uh, social structure you have kobolds once enslaved by dwarves kobolds are now are known for their survival skills mining abilities and love of creating traps they're also fairly popular in anime and other fantasy settings mm-hmm. uh, the dragonborn the youngest of the races in Midgard, Dragonborn are powerful, scaled humanoids known for their arrogance and skill in warfare. They are divided into four elemental kinds, fire, wind, stone, and wave. They are believed to be favored by the world serpent Velis. And then you have the Shadow Fae, elves and goblins who are, have sworn allegiance to the goddess of night and magic. They are skilled in shadow magic, obviously, and have a love for hunting, trickery, and duels. Then you have the Gearforged. 
created by the gear goddess Rava. Rava? Gearforged are mechanical beings with souls. They are known for their clockwork magic and can serve as guard soldier, soldiers in other roles. Now, that's just a few of them. That's more detail in each of them. You also have other interesting empires. You have like the dwarven ones, which are, I assume are more gear based. And then you have the elven ones. You have a ghoul imperium, a subterranean empire ruled by flesh eating ghouls who have conquered other races of the underworld. They are ruled by Emperor Nick Ferus, the Pale, I think, from his palace in the city of White Bone. That's a nice name. Uh, their armies are vast and include monsters, creatures like Bone Colossus or Colossi, demonic rams, undead purple worms, which are huge creatures, mag, like gargantuan themselves, and now they're dead. <laughs> they're, oh, well, that's nice. Yeah, they're a se- significant threat to the surface world, and I think they're a better threat than the Underdark creatures you find in the Forgotten Realms. The Blood Kingdom of uh, Morgal, Mor- Morgu, I like this one a lot. I actually, I've made a character kind of based out of this place. The kingdom is ruled by vampires, ghouls, and other intelligent undead. King Lucian, the lord of Shroud Eaters, rules this land of mist shrouded mountains, steep gorges, and dark forests. The living are treated as little more than property, and the kingdom is known for its cruelty and depravity. Vampires hmm. maintain their power through fear and intimidation, and their armies are bolstered by undead troops and ghoulish mercenaries. You have other races that you can play as, like the, well, here's some major ones anyway. Elf, Marked, the Gear Forged, Humans, Kobolds, Minotaurs, Ravenfolk, Shadow Fae. Uh, the minor races are the Bear Folk, the Centaurs, the Damn Fear, which is half vampire, half human things. Gnolls, creepy, savage, but somewhat civilized hyenas, pretty much. Gnomes, you know about those. Rat Folk, Trollkin, uh, they are kind of troll like people, kind of seem somewhat, somewhat giant like. And the Winter Folk Halflings. A lot of the book in the Hero's Handbook covers subclasses for your classes. You got Barbarian. You got Path of the Ancestors. They got one. Bard has College of the Entropy and Greenleaf College. The Cleric, which is where I get most of mine from when I play. It's the Apocalypse Domain. The Cat Domain. The Clockwork Domain. The Darkness Domain. The Dragon Domain. The Hunger Domain. The Hunting Domain. The Justice Domain. The Labyrinth Domain which I'm pretty sure you have to be a minotaur to play that. The moon domain, the mountain domain, the ocean domain, the prophecy domain, the speed domain, which is cool, the travel domain, and the void domain, which is another cool one. But my favorite one is the beer domain. There's a beer cleric, a cleric of drink. What is that spell called that I used? Oh, Eldritch Blast instead of Eldritch Blast. It's like ale. Yeah. Uh, The druids have the circle of stone. The fighter has the clanking mercenary, mm-hmm. the id, idjet, I can't pronounce that one, the ghost knight, which I had somebody play as a ghost knight, the griffin knight, the shield bearer, and the sword dancer, which sounds cool, a, a dancing fighter, paladin, oath of radiance, and the oath of thunder, the ranger, you have the vampire slayer, and the zobic scout, and then you have the rogue, the duelist, the fixer, and the whisperer, those are pretty cool if you look into those, I ain't going to explain all of them, we'd be here for a while. The maze born and the shadow are for sorcerer. The shadow sorcerer or the maze sorcerer. Another one that may be for minotaurs. The warlocks have the genie lord, the great machine, and the light eater. The light eater sounds cool. Probably a void based one. The great machine is obviously for gear forwards and stuff, but you can play if it is any character. The genie lord is another great one. And then the wizard is another one of quite a few. Not as many as the cleric, but a few. They have the angelic scribe, the clockwork, doom croaker and it sounds kind of like another apocalypse one the dragon mast the elementalist elven high magic the empathy again geomancy which is cool because it's a ley line kind of thing um and the illumination necrography and the ring warden rings are pretty cool they're like you can store magic in rings there's a lot of interesting little touches in this that you wouldn't expect uh the world book is massive how many pages are in that thing 462 yeah, it's a it's a sizable book, and it's well printed. I will say that all of them. I never had anything from Cobalt Press that was bad when it comes to the print. Um, and I've collected uh, almost as many mid or Cobalt Press five E books as I have actual Wizards of the Coast ones. And theirs, in a lot of ways, is superior <laughs> when it comes to world settings and spells. A lot of their spells. I'll cover that in the next episode. 
as well as some of the monsters you get because they've had a lot of monster compendiums, uh, Codex of Beasts, stuff like that. They have like four or five that's out that are each 400 and some pages of monsters and such. And the spell books as well, uh, Deep Magic and all that. On Roll20 is where we bought it at. I got it on physical, but I also have the Roll20 version. And just the spells alone. Uh, of course, the Hero's Handbook has spells, but they have their own expansions. And the spells alone have got to the point where I click on my spl- spell list for a cleric or wizard, and it takes a while for them to load up. There's so many. A lot of them are great. A lot of them are themed towards these weird uh, types of magic, like the Void or the Clockwork or the uh, Geomancy, stuff like that. Uh, Scribe, the Rings, they all have their type of magic. You can always find a cool place to go. Oh, there's the City of Wheels, another one of those cool places. A nomadic city that moves across the plains on the back of creaking carts, serving as the capital of the Kahaziki Kanete. I can't pronounce that, but it makes me think of a movie I watched once. And it's, I think it's based on a book. I can't remember what it is, but a moving city is attacking each other. It's like post-apocalyptic kind of thing. Many, many, many years after the apocalypse. But that's neither here nor there. If he's going to play D&D, would you rather do it in the setting we've done before or something that's more based on our world like this? The way we would see things back in the age of the Vikings and it, it like if all their stuff was real, the Egyptian mythos and all Vikings that. I think Vikings and Egyptians were real. No, the mythos that they created. Oh. If it was all real, the Roman ones, the, the Egyptian ones, the Viking and then all that. I think that would be a cool I would twist do on that. it. Yeah. I would almost say take the weird world that it's in out and put it on Earth mm-hmm. and just use the uh, settings or the places in the areas that they came from originally. Mm-hmm. I've never seen that done. I'm sure if I Googled it, I could find it, but I didn't Google it because I was just going to run with what we got here if we did do it. Um, Dakota, everybody I know that wants to play D&D wants to play in this one, but I never get the schedule out to do it, of course. So we just end up, when we get a group together, who hasn't agreed to play in this setting, we will just kind of integrate the parts we want out of the book and not tell anybody. But there's tons of it. And with a new edition of D&D coming out soon, this is a good way to expand your current library if you don't want to invest in that. Go to the Midgard setting. I might be just preaching to the void here because if I know about it and you're deep enough into D&D to be listening to this, you probably already know about the Midgard the Midgard setting and Cobalt Press's stuff. They have their own system coming out that's based on 5e called Tales of the Valorant. Mm -hmm. It's not based on it enough to be copyrighted infringing kind of stuff but it is based on it you can use these books with their tales of the valorant fairly well uh it's kind of like what pathfinder did of third edition dnd they just augmented it enough to where they wouldn't get sued uh i haven't looked into tales of the valorant i might do that after i go through this just so i can stay with the cobalt press stuff um they're not sponsoring of course or anything we're not famous enough for that but 5e when it comes to 5e if i'm not buying dnd stuff which i bear buy less and less I am buying Cobalt Press stuff, which is better. Um, I'm pretty sure they have another one called the City of Cats, which is more of the Egyptian-themed or Middle Eastern-themed. I can't recall. I didn't buy that book. I think I have the PDF. I'll, I'll read through it. I know I have the PDF. I got it on a bundle of holding or a something like that deal. Mm-hmm. I got a whole bunch of their books real cheap. So we've played The Forgotten Realms since D&D 5e came out, and we never really branched out too often. This would be a good way to do that if you want to stay with 5e. Mm-hmm. Or Pathfinder, but I haven't got any of the Pathfinder versions of these books. I'm pretty sure every book I mentioned from Cobalt Press has a Pathfinder version, if it's got a 5e version. Uh, not 100% sure, but pretty sure. You can look at their website. Of course, we'll have the drive through RPG affiliate link for these books in the description if you're interested. Uh, it'll go to help keep the podcast hosted and everything. We'd appreciate that. They don't have free samples. At least I don't think they do. I couldn't find any when I was looking. I try to put free samples if they have any, but it would be kind of hard to put a free sample of something that's just a world setting. I mean, that's just a description of the book pretty much. So I think you'll enjoy the monster manuals more than you're enjoying the world book because that's just not something you're going to sit and read the whole thing, is, but you like the pictures in the monster manuals. Yeah. That's the way a lot of people found D&D, by the way, finding monster manuals. A lot of the OG people who make in D&D now, when they're talking about how they got introduced to it, they say that they found a monster manual in a store somewhere, got it, and looked it over and didn't want to get dressed because monsters are cool. <laughs> like I said, we're going to keep going into this. And I like the Midgard setting a lot. So you said you would play in this setting? Probably more so than the Stargate one, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big fan of Stargate, but she don't like space stuff. Unless it's a TARDIS involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, well, I guess that's all we have to say about it. Uh, we'll talk more about the spells. And the more you know about the spells and the monsters, the more you get an idea what the world is all about. I still, like, I'm going to go into Baba Yaga just because she's fun. 
of course. She has horsemen that are like her heralds in the game, but we'll discuss that later. They they like to chase down gnomes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I, I would side of Baba Yaga over the gnomes. I know it's an evil way to go, but I always liked Baba Yaga. The gnomes are the real evil ones. They yeah. eat cats. Apparently, they do. I guess that's it. If you like what you heard here and want to support us, use the affiliate links. Anything you buy while you click on that link will don't have to be what the link is for. Just anything after you click on it will help us out. Or uh, there's a link in the description where you could donate a little bit. It's secured by our podcast host. It's Nobody's going to steal your identity or anything. It could be completely anonymous. And we appreciate all that if you want to do that. And there's also a link that's a link tree link. It'll take you to all of our other socials, uh, our media sources like YouTube, Twitch. We're hardly ever on Twitch for more of the YouTube stuff. And uh, how you can reach out to us. Any of the social links if you want to reach out. Or the email also in the description. You can reach out and let us know what you think. What we could do better. Leave a review. Share if you know anybody that want to hear about the Midgard setting or any of our other episodes. Uh, we'll be back. We're on a every other week release now. Our other podcast as part of the Gruesome Gaming Group will be in the link in the link tree. Uh, it's Horrific History and Hauntings. It's one where Beth here tells me about everything in the title. Horrific History that are true. Hauntings may or may not be true, but we try to include those if they're involved because that's in the title. Things like that. Just tragedy. Sometimes some true crime. We like true crime. So we'll get into that. Just that's horrific. You know, it's a crime. Usually some murder involved. Anything else you want to say, Beth? No. <laughs> okay. Thank you for listening. I've been Ramey. And I'm Beth. And this has been Brotherhood's Quest. Bye-bye.